Hey, KMS Rundown listeners, you can find every episode on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Prime members can listen ad-free on Amazon Music. Here's the rundown with that piece of absolute dog shit and a total cunt, Red. Wow. I Thank you, Clummer. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my... thank you, Clummer. Oh, wow. I... I feel all warm and fuzzy inside getting that, that introduction. That was great. Thank you, uh, Clemmer, leaning into it. Sheldon, how we doing, buddy? Oh, pretty good, pretty good. Another pretty week good. down. Yeah. Um, a full week. We got we got a ton of shows to go over. Um, we're preparing for Portland next week. I know you want to talk about that. I know you're very excited about the, the live show in Portland. So we will we will talk about those things. Um, first off the bat, you're you're a farmer. So I- Blue, your blue collar, yeah, I've heard, of, I've heard about this. Um, mm-hmm. Just questions about pig piss um, and your pig situation. Um, you know, can am I a pig if I come to your farm and, and get some kind of transplant? Am I now a pig, or how does this work, Sheldon? You, I think you're the the foremost expert in this. Area. I, I know, I know what he was trying to ask, but it was so fucking stupid. He shouldn't have asked. It. Like I, I, I was starting to get lost in this black hole of stupidity listening i just wanted it to stop but he kept asking and it's just like what I, what he was trying to ask was is there basically going to have pig dna in this person so i don't i don't i don't even know how to explain it i don't how do you even explain that to somebody i, I don't know uh, i don't know what's going on the uh, beautiful boston college and the education system that's going on there at that private school. I have no idea. But Coleman, I don't know if this just comes with the producing gig. I don't know if when you sign up to be a producer, your IQ level just immediately goes down. But there's been some real dummies that have come to that studio. And I'm not talking about Dave Colony. Dave Colony is brilliant, um, never made a mistake in his life, um, truly a great human being. I'm talking about everybody else. But all the other producers uh, have come through there. I all will the say producers- Nope. I will say that uh, Dave Cullinane's terrible at trying to talk about the Karen Reed case. Don't, Jerry Thornton just shitting down his throat on the I Bristol blog. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't bring up Dave for you to do this. <laughs> I'm right? sorry. All right, but there's but, something about there's something about a producer. Okay, so if, if you are a father. Um, please, fathers out there who are listening, because we know there's no mothers listening to this show. Please, fathers, don't raise your children to be producers. Because you come off as a real dummy as soon as you turn into a podcast producer. That's, there's no doubt about that. The more you know. <laughs> so, so, so we we have that today. Uh, what did you think about today's show? We, this is literally this is Friday afternoon. We are reacting pretty much as soon as the unnamed show is over. Um, what did you think about today's show, John from Scranton, um, getting in there, beautiful jeans, uh, and all. What do you think about today's show? I guess we'll do a little reaction to today's show and work back to the week. I thought today's show was pretty good. Um, it's It was a little different dynamic with Mike and John. But uh, overall, I thought John was pretty good on the show talking about uh, the network and what's going on. And I do like the thought of uh, Menners can have the job if he sails over here and then hitchhikes from California. And mm-hmm. then when he gets here... Then Kirk still doesn't give him a job, <laughs> but, <laughs> but just the thought of him sailing and not being on YouTube, because I don't think you get Wi-Fi in the middle of the ocean, do you? No, you don't. So, yes. uh, well, maybe there, there's some crafts. I think you'd still be able to do that. I think I think I've seen that. I think there's somebody who's been sailing for quite some time who has all those uh, amenities on their their craft. On a sailboat? Like, on a sailboat, even. I think you could still do that. But at least it would save us from his tweets. I don't, I don't think he would have access to those things. So at least that would save us there. The little fella, I don't know if he could make that trip, but I'd be rooting for him hard. It seems like uh, seems like he's had some tough times recently. I feel bad. Uh, Lord knows we're not somebody here to rub it in his face. I'm not on this show. So I, I think he could do it. Uh, it would be great for him to get there. And like you said, not even then get the job. I would look forward to that. Uh, Maybe get him in the studio. Maybe get him outside the studio, but just never get him in there. 
Well, and then honestly, it, it's pretty easy to get in this country. You can just fucking swim up and cross a border without. Whoa! You know, <laughs> just... Whoa. So then, hey, listen, let's don't. We're, we're, this is not political hot takes here. We're not okay, doing... fine. I mean, okay. then again. Okay, Montante, what are you okay. doing? Then again, he is white-ish, but he might be brown enough where he can just. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh. <laughs> Oh boy! All right. Well. Okay. Next. Next. Yeah. Well, I know. So I know you're very excited about uh, uh, Justin's bits that's been going on this week. It seems like it seems like Kirk is very upset with him. Um, you know, angry, angry responses every time Justin brings up the calorie deficit. Um, and I know you have some thoughts on it. I do as well. I just, I'm curious of the the four the first four days of this you know, stuffing your face with shepherd's pie in Olive Garden, you know, those first four days. Doesn't seem like the best plan. And then I think today he said he had some chicken nuggets yesterday. And, and a cheeseburger. Some and some cheeseburgers. Uh, bold move. <laughs> I mean, you can you can count calories. That's one way to do it. But there is different calories, which he can't get through his fucking head. So, like, when he went to McDonald's the other day, and he's like, well, what do you have? Two single patties with... Mm -hmm. McChickens as the buns and everything, that is still a shit ton of calories, and they're not good calories. Right. There's a difference between good calories and bad calories, and like good fat and bad fat. And like he just doesn't get it. He just thinks since he used to eat 8,500 calories a day, and now he eats 5,000, like he'll lose weight, which technically he will, but not very fucking fast. No. Um, but all he just keeps talking about is the caloric. Uh, difference or deficiency or whatever the fuck he's talking about, but he's dead serious. That's a deficit. That's a deficit. And then I, you know that very well. And then he's arguing with Kirk about it, where Kirk's like, <laughs> "Why are you fucking arguing with me about this? You're a fat ass." <laughs> Which, I just and he kept going and going. And I the bonus show on Tuesday was that Tuesday? Yeah. Yes. On Tuesday, I thought Kirk was gonna fucking kill him. Yeah, because he's are you when Justin's like, no, you're just wrong, and well, he's not wrong. Yeah, that's, uh, that's that's where these things have turned up. That's where the Kirk hate has turned up a little bit. Every time Justin chimes in now, Kirk is very short with him, even to the point where when Kirk was trying to get Coleman and Justin to cut their hair, Justin is now putting up a fight and saying that he's not going to cut his hair, he's not going to do this. So, so something there's something going on with Justin now where he's trying to have some backbone with Kirk. And not just be a yes man. I don't know how that's going to work out for him as we approach Wait, the live show. Even like uh, I didn't watch. I, I listened to bits of it on uh, when he was at the Olive Garden, which sounded fucking disgusting. First of all, the deal was to go there and eat ten breadsticks, and then he gets a fucking appetizer too yet, yep. and then he has a meal, and then he has ten breadsticks. Yeah, which was <laughs> how many thousands of calories? And he's like, well, it doesn't really matter. It's just the calories, and it's like. It's not exactly how that works. There's a reason that there's actual diets, you know, with like low carb and sure. high protein and all that. But he's like, no, he's just counting calories. Yeah, you can count calories when you're down a lot. You're not going to count calories to lose a weight loss challenge. So yesterday he's eating cheeseburgers and fucking chicken nuggets. And what did Coleman say? He had a turkey wrap with the wrap was sun-dried tomato. Already, that's way fucking ahead. And you just can't get that through Justin's head. He's just like, no, you're wrong. You're wrong. You're wrong. No, well, you're fucking wrong, Justin. <laughs> what I don't understand is, what I don't understand with, with, with Justin's line of thinking, so he's trying to set himself up for success beyond just these 100 days. You know, have like a, a diet that he can stick to. You know, you know, a diet is known as not only, you know, going on a crash diet, but your normal, typical day-to-day -day diet. And that's what Justin's trying to go for, which I admire. But if, if his day-to-day -day diet is still cheeseburgers and chicken nuggets and Olive Garden, that's still not a diet that you want long-term anyway. So why no. not embrace, you know, add some vegetables. Well, <laughs> Maybe he had some vegetables in there, buddy. That well, would he, really help. He did say that he had vegetables. didn't say what they were. <laughs> so who the hell knows? But I, I just, now is the time when you're trying to lose weight to rewire your fucking brain and get away mm -hmm. from this food. But he just thinks he can eat all the shit food and just eat less. Well, then we're good. That's the whole point of a diet. I, I know that you don't partake in the network shows, not all of them, but if you, if you do partake in a few, obviously drips in the office is my favorite. Um, 
And you listen That's to my Pat favorite Ford. tool. Thank you. Yeah. So Pat Ford is on a mission. He's, you know, solidarity. He's losing weight with the boys. He's cut out fruit, fruit, fruit by the foot. Okay. So he's cut out or fruit loops. I can't remember what it was. I'm sorry. I, 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 the kid food, he's cut out some kid food from his diet and that's really helped him. I think Justin could do the same if he just cuts back on these things. And somehow Coleman is going to run away with this thing. Justin has no shot of winning this, and yet he is stubborn as all get out. This whole bit of him buying into this is infuriating everyone because it's, it's not going to happen. There's simply no way he can win this. Since he started on the show, he's quit out. He's cut out Mountain Dew and all that soda. Bravo. Bravo. So without cutting that, with cutting that out, he should have been dropping pounds like a motherfucker anyway. So how fucking shitty does he eat? That he cut out soda and there was no difference. That makes no sense. Right. And, and I still don't buy the fact that this kid could be in a coma and burn 3,000 calories. Oh, my God. That, that <laughs> argument was, the argument was infuriating. All of it was. <laughs> Col- Coleman no is going gonna, is gonna, to, even if they lose the same, Coleman's percentage is going to be way higher. But he way was convinced high. that he pissed out 10 pounds. After the weigh-in, so he's That's already ahead. So I want to double down, and it's just like I, I, I can't. Justin Bits, I don't need. I don't need Justin Bits with him. How he's running away with this, and how yeah. Kirk doesn't know fucking anything about health. It's I, there's there's a live show coming, and if that thing does not run, you know, go off without a hitch, Justin's going to be in a world of hurt along with Coleman. But Justin's going to be in. I think he's going to be in dire straits here because. We've heard that he's going to be selling snow cones this weekend, which is a bold move. Um, uh, a doggo pointed this out to me earlier today that, uh, you know, selling the snow cones this weekend is a bold move as you approach that live show. Also, uh, top priority is getting the gritties and making sure the sound is set up properly for Mike and the Men fans. So which no one gives a fuck cones. about. It never, it's never <laughs> going to sound good. I don't know that anybody's going to care about that, but I appreciate that he's got that attention to detail. Uh, I'm worried about Justin's mental health after this live show in Portland because I can't see this thing going well for him. But I hope that it does because I am I'm, I'm, I'm assuming that uh, they don't do a lot of the sound or anything at the State Theater, though. Right. I'm, so that might be their only saving grace. If this was like a case of Cokes in Plymouth, they might be fucked. Yeah, but if the, if the State Theater is doing most of the technical stuff, then they might be okay. So if anything fucks up <laughs> that is on them, it's going to be bad. It's going to be bad. Yeah. So, so looking ahead to to that weekend, Clemmer, I'm assuming, it sounds like Clemmer's going to be there. Clemmer's going to be helping out. Clemmer popped in this week. Um, so as we're working back to that show, I was highly anticipating that. Um, again, thank you, Clemmer, for the intro. I, I know he is a rundown fan. I am that he uh, is. <laughs> that he is. Um, unfortunately for Clemmer, I did not think this was his best performance. It seemed like kind of a dud of a show. I think Steve from Gloucester helped him out in that show and saved the show in a lot of different ways, especially with dirty dancing and ghosts and everything else. Um, but Clemmer, I was very disappointed from his performance. I think I think you might agree there, Sheldon. Hard disagree. I thought he was good. What? <laughs> he, he, he used to come in and uh, he was just a punchy bag and we could always yell at him for not seeing movies and shit like that. But he's just like, he was actually st- standing up to Kirk and he's like, no, you're just an asshole. Like, you're just an asshole to me. <laughs> and uh, I thought he was good. Um, you thought maybe not. Good? It wasn't his best performance, wasn't his worst. I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed uh, when he, I like when Clemmer gets what gets bitchy. So like when he was just calling out Steve from Gloucester and then like Justin and Coleman, and then he'd be like, oh, I love Coleman. After yeah. he just buried yeah. Coleman, I, yeah, yeah. I found that entertaining. But and, I mean, come on, he's going after the weaklings over there. He's not really going after Kirk. Who the hell is he Kirk? supposed to, well, no, he, he yelled at Kirk a few times. Okay, well, I don't, I, don't, I mean, we can agree to disagree there, but he's still holding on to this hundred hours thing, Sheldon. You and I both know it was not a hundred hours. That stayed uh, I no, Love it was ninety. It. it was ninety-seven. Um, okay, thank you. All but right, on, good. but honestly, I I I've let that go. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what did, did Clover get to you? What happened to you? What uh, happened to you? Uh, 
I turned the leaf. I don't even remember no, that stream anymore. No. That stream. It may, I heard. It, I heard it was pretty good. I heard he was trending on Twitter that way. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. But okay. I mean, is what it is. I guess. Um, I his, to... his, his, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Plummer's best stuff. His best stuff was was coming from Kelly Keys. Like all that stuff where he's going after Coleman, talking about Coleman, which I thought was funny because it is funny to imagine Coleman being in the New York office and being this huggy lovey guy and then coming over to, to KMS and being, you know, throwing some fire at people. I understand that's a funny comparison, but that's all from Kelly Keeks. So Clemmer's just coming in there. His best stuff is from Keeks. You must admit that, Chuck. Well, people really like that owl. And then... <laughs> oh, no! You son of a bitch. And I, I texted one of my sources to ask them a question about uh, Kelly Keeks. And then they sent me to do some research, and mm -hmm. I have no problems with Kelly Keeks. I mean, she does great work. It might not all be for Barstool, but she does have some good stuff out there. Okay. All right. I, I think your source from the tri-state area I, should probably, probably lay off OnlyFans. I, I, okay. I, I can't reveal my sources. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. But oh. another thing, Steve – I love you, Steve. You've love never him. seen Dirty Dancing. Just admit mm -hmm. it. You never saw it. I've never seen it. I didn't say I have. But you were adamant that you seen it. You were going to have to go rewatch right. it. You didn't know any of the movie. I knew more about the movie, and I've never seen it than you, Steve. No, 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 no. The, the, the Pope just got confused. Don't don't come after Steve like this. He's, he's a friend of the show. Don't do this. Because I, he, just, he had I, seen the movie. He had seen, no. he just, who among us? Has has remembered every detail of a movie, Sheldon. I mean, obviously, I, I could I could reenact Footloose for you right now. I mean, brilliant movie. The guy from Jay Pache talked about it, even though he thought he was talking about Dirty Dancing, but he was definitely talking about Footloose. He might have been. It's great because there's Kevin Bacon in it, and there's Tremors, or that might be another movie. They're all I the same. A movie's a movie, so you're right. Steve probably did see it because all movies are the same. Who cares? Well, listen, Kevin Bacon and Patrick Swayze, both are great. In well, their own. one of them's live, so I guess we know who won. Well, <laughs> listen, Swayze also, you'll like this. I mean, when you talk about Hall of Fame smokers in a movie, Swayze was one of the best smokers of all time. So I, I do, I did love his, and that probably did him in, I'm sure. So that is what it is. But just like Jimmy Buffett with his skin cancer, you know, these things happen to us. But God, Swayze lived it, man. He smoked it down to the filter. God, so I miss, I, I miss smoking. Oh, well, sorry. But <laughs> no, so I, what I'm saying is, is, is our guy Steve. He knows movies. He just got confused. I, I believe that. I want to believe Steve. In that. That's Why didn't I, I, Steve? Fine, I believe you. I believe you. I believe that you saw Dirty Dancing. It was just a long time ago. There we go. We're, we got an agreement there. And what was the bad thing that Whoopi Goldberg and Ted Danson did? Do you know? Um, so I believe Ted Danson showed up to... He Jimmy Kimmel, to, didn't he? Uh, Ted Danson showed up in blackface. Whoa. So there was a blackface incident that they were... And Whoopi co-signed it and they were in on it together. So I think that was the worst thing that they were hinting at, I believe. Who Whoopi uh, Goldberg is a fucking vile woman now like she was maybe okay back then but that fucking blimp now she's awful well have you have you seen eddie have you seen the movie eddie oh that i thought you were, i was like how dare you say something about her being like eddie from barstool you cut no 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 no, 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 no. <laughs> i wouldn't do that there's a movie that and look at you not you know admitting that you have not seen the movie there's a movie eddie where she was the new york knicks head coach she was a fan who was brought in i've never even heard of that movie <laughs> Okay, well, we're going to get that. I'm going to ship that one out to North Dakota soon. That was kind of like her heyday. That was like where she reached her peak. Obviously, Ghost, she had to get a very... Honestly, I thought her heyday was being the mom of the one black kid from Little Rascals. Also, that was a great movie. That's and a great she, had, movie. she had no words. It was perfect. Also true. <laughs> she was great in that. And, but, you see, people get caught up in the view, Whoopi Goldberg. You got to get, get back to the 90s. That's where... And obviously, she ruined Cheers. She ended Cheers, but that is well. That's why Rosie O'Donnell ruined uh, the Flintstone movie for me. Uh, she was, I mean, 
Rosie could get it back in the day. Okay. Yeah, she wasn't bad looking. Now you see her, and it's like I don't know if I should hit her with a shovel or what. <laughs> <laughs> we're we're going we're going way down. We're going oh, sorry, down sorry. That's okay. Um, okay, so that was in that show, the Dirty Dancing show with Clemmer. Okay, we get that from from was that Thursday? Was that yes. Wednesday? Okay, no. no, that was Wednesday. That was Wednesday. We, we had the Robbie V experience as well. Now, I'm a Robbie V guy. All of a sudden, I, I was not aware of him at all. That's that's my fault. I was not tuned in to Robbie V. Um, but I, I love I love everything about that man. He's got he's got somebody once said that he had a touch of the tism, and then I think somebody said that he got bitch slapped with a whole lot of tism because Robbie V is on is on some kind of spectrum that I love and I want I want some more Robbie V time if we can get it at some point. So I was looking forward to that show and I was pleasantly surprised. That was the highlight of the week for me. Um, how did you feel like the Robbie V experience was for you, Shelby? I, I I couldn't hear him half the time. And Kirk actually nailed it today when he was like, you just were sitting there waiting for him to keep talking. And you're like, oh, I guess that's it. Because he would just throw in about five words and then that was it. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was a new experience. I'll, I'll give him that. I mean, I didn't hate, I didn't hate his appearance and I love, no. I love sweet Danny and they're just getting ran out of the house by his wife mm -hmm. and uh, he had to hide in the studio and do a show. Thank yep. you, Danny. Great yeah. Night. I don't know. I, I wonder what lie he told her to get out of the house, whatever he did. Thank you for doing it, Danny. Cause if Danny doesn't go into the show, he also doesn't make that comment about uh, the rundown, the bad version of the rundown, too. So thank you for that, Danny. You're a, you're a P1D1 for us. So I sent uh, I sent some flowers to your wife. I hope that's okay. And I let her know that you've done a great job. Um, Danny, well, I'll reach out. I'll reach out to Greg. I'll get you two back together. Oh, There's no almost. need. Well, that's sweet. Well, maybe we can get him and Greg in Portland next weekend. That would be nice. Maybe Greg. No, I ain't gonna be there. Go. So I guess never oh. mind, Danny. You're on your own. Oh, well, Danny, we appreciate you. Thank you for that. Uh, did love the the Robbie V experience. Um, it seems it like was an experience. It was an experience. <laughs> it did seem like it did seem like there's more developing. Maybe has your source told you anything more going on with uh, Dave from Hull? And, and that whole backstory seemed like there was uh, still some hurt feelings there. I, I don't I, like you insinuating who you think you know who my source is. I don't. No, no, no. I just <laughs> I know what source is. You but source I, but is. I've had another source oh. that knows the source oh. that I think Dave still hates that source of a source. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, no. So we'll let's leave it bad. at that. Yeah. Well, I'm holding out hope. I think Daver is going to be there in Portland next weekend. I think he's going to make the trip. Something tells me he's still listening to the show. I don't buy that he's just completely checked out. Nobody leaves. Nobody. They just no. That's true. They just they always listen. They and, I like, on and I like and I like Yeah, and I like Daver. Daver's a great guy. I mean, I'll buy him a twisted tea anytime. Um, I'll give him a hug, and I'll immediately wipe off that cologne after I give him that hug, but he's, he's, a, he's a sweetheart, man. I feel bad that this happened to him. Um, I wish he could have a little more humor with it. And I wish, you know, I wish maybe a source or two in, in Tri-State could have a little more humor with it, but that is what it is. Um, I think it's still going to work out for him. My source has plenty of humor. Okay. okay. All right. Okay. All right. <laughs> well, all right. I, you got sources. Um, okay. So we got, we got the Danny and Bill Ricker show. We got the Clemmer show. The 6,000 calories and the bottomless breadsticks. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. The bonus show, I loved this week. I was not that impressed with the Cinema Lord experience for that show. And I don't think it's anything that he's done. I just, that Fall River accent for me. I, I can't hang with it, man. That's like, fucking I, wicked tough. That's it's tough. wicked. <laughs> it, it, it's it's really it's really tough to hang in there for that show. And he must I know he gets that all the time, but I hear he that got, he got my face. I just got wicked sarcastic with him. <laughs> yeah, he, just, 
Like, you imagine the kid just, like, crying in the car, and this guy is just chirping another guy who's in his face. Like, I, I need Cinema Lords to keep coming in because I need to keep – I need this – I need to know how this love story ends because we get, we get more bits of it every time he comes in. I need it to keep going. Until and unless they break up, then we're then I'm done with Cinema Lords. But I need this love story because this is like the notebook in podcast form. Well, I could see this. I could see this escalating too, right? He said that he's he and his lady friend are coming up um, to Portland, and I could see this kind of escalating with the Minna fans trying to get this thing going a little bit and having conversations with her because he shared he shared a lot of details, a lot of details, <laughs> which I, I I wouldn't think that she would want out there. I know. But, I don't think she would. I don't know if she listens to the show. I think she's going to hear a lot. Like I can envision her being in gritties and getting an earful, you know, from a lot of guys, uh, including a source from the tri-state area. I think it, I think things are going to escalate here, and I don't think it's going to be good for the guy. But I hear that accent, that Fall River accent, and I I am stunned that he's only been to jail once because I assume. Anybody that I've known with that accent from Fall River, not only have they been to jail, they've been to prison, my friend, and they usually have a couple of bodies that go with it because they're, they're, that's a tough place. So Son of I, Lord I and Dylan. They made it out. <laughs> <laughs> the, the sweet nothings across the across the cells. Hey, what the fuck? Um, anything else from this week that stood out to you, Sheldon? Um, I know you're not a network guy. My only notes come from um, some of the network shows. I'm going to be honest, like the Mick experience for me, I've actually really enjoyed that they've gone twice a week. But the repartee that he has with his cousin and the back and forth, and it's it can be a lot, man. Like there's a lot of like, I don't know how to describe it, but I need those guys to maybe bring in like a third voice because between those two going back and forth, like, I feel like you and I, we're, you know, we're like outcast here. You know, Andre 3000 and Big Boy, we're just bouncing back and forth. With those two, it's it's not like, it's a lot. There's like, I'm not saying it's cocaine. I'm saying it's Adderall. There's a lot going on there with those two as far as their pacing goes. So I could use a third voice in there with Mick, Beyond Average Mick is all I'm Well, they, they used to have Brother Al. Right. But now the rumor is that he's going over to the other network. And now he's gone. Mm, yeah. across the street that's that hurts because i'm i'm an owl guy um i need him back in there those it can't be a two-man show it needs to be those two show. fucking hate each other i'm convinced like mick fucking hates al <laughs> he does he's got that little brother thing going on and i feel bad and by the way when it comes to these little brothers and the height thing and everything else and i think montante had this um last week these guys are not 5'10". I've heard both of these guys say that they're 5'10". I've seen them both. They are not 5'10". I don't care what kind of work boots you put on these gentlemen, but these are little people, and these little people usually bring you know big egos, and Mick has the biggest ego, I think, probably. He gets very upset about the smallest thing, and it's a lot of yapping going on there. But these people I mean, not- who hasn't overreacted for no reason? I mean, <laughs> I, for one... Like to be calm, cool, and collected. That's just what I've I noticed do. that. I noticed but, that. Uh, yeah, you're much also, calmer now, Sheldon. Yeah, it's probably because I'm at work. It sucks. That's probably has something to do with it. So I, I'm not going to get that Mayo tweet of the week from you, am I? I'm not going to get. Well, that. I was going through Mayo's tweets because they are fucking terrible, and he knows this. And yeah. uh, I did enjoy uh, Clemmer burying him. That made me happy, to be honest with you. This is where this is where you turned. This is where you turned because you had some negativity towards Clever, and now you've turned completely. I, I know what's going on here. I I don't I don't recall that, but okay. I mean, right. you, I guess you heard what you heard. Okay. So this was uh, <laughs> this was twenty two hours ago. This is this is mm. perfect mail. Just trying yeah. to walk something back. The little fuck. He tweets out, Coleman should have given his bonus to Castellani. Because he's still trying to convince everyone that he was fucking joking when mm-hmm. he said that he didn't, they didn't deserve those bonuses, which he wasn't. He was dead serious. So now he's yeah. just trying to play this into a joke. And it was such a good tweet. It's been seen by 230 people, and it has zero likes. <laughs> I mean, holy shit. 
Like, and I'm not, I'm not excited for him to go in studio with Jeff D. Lowe. Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. Come no, on. I'm not, because I want Jeff to be a dick to him, and I think Jeff's going to be nice to him, and I don't like that. Well, yeah, that might be the case. But here's the thing. Here's what I love about that Jeff D. Lowe and Mayo thing is I imagine the both of them have been training so hard for the studio appearance because there's some kind of weight loss challenge and some kind of rivalry that Mayo's created now where each of them is trying to be skinnier than the other. And so I can, I just, I like the vision of them getting up in the morning, jazzercising, doing their pool workouts, right? And they're getting those weights out or they're riding their bikes and they're just pedaling along and then just like got a picture, like they're on the Peloton bike and there's like a picture of Mayo in front of Jeff Lowe. And he's pedaling, he's pedaling with his orthopedic feet. He's going and he's sweating out and he's just getting ready to go. And Mayo's doing the same thing. And there's going to be like this, this collision course of these two, like not morbidly obese, but slightly obese men meeting each other in Watertown. It's going to be a beautiful thing. I'm looking forward to that meetup. I can't wait. Do you, do you think Mayo's going to talk about his stupid fucking seminars to Jeff D. Lowe and try and sell them? Um, I, listen, Mayo's always selling, and I love that about him. He's he listen. It's just we're we're trying to make this fun, okay? He's trying to he's trying to have a fun podcast where he's bringing people in and using great office buzzwords, great seminars. Um, they're not. Working. I am having fun. I'm having fun hating Andy Mayo, and no one can ever take that away from me. There you go. Isn't that nice? So you, I think that's going to be a great appearance next week. So we're going to get some Mayo in studio. And then I know that I'm going to hopefully get to meet up with him on Saturday, break bread with Mayo, and then we're going to FaceTime you in. It's going to be a wonderful time. So I, I'm, I'm looking forward to bridging this relationship together. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually getting mad just thinking about it. <laughs> I'm not enjoying that at all. I don't get any enjoyment out of that. Um, anything else from this week, Sheldon, as we get into what should be – this seemed like, you know, a week to prepare. This seemed like a week where they're putting all the live show stuff together. So we didn't get a lot of fireworks. I think a steady, a steady climb of the show or steady dose of this show where it was just kind of good, right? So next week should be bigger. What, is there anything you're looking forward to or anything you can predict for us as we look ahead to what should be a big week? You know what this week missed? Hmm. It missed a guy cashing tickets, watching basketball with his boys. We didn't That's hear cool. anything about Mutt Stack today. That's we didn't true. have Mutt on this week at all. That's true. I mean, what are we doing here? Like, Thank Mutt you. puts Thank asses you. in seats. That's a Everyone fact. knows this. Yeah. And we could have used Mutt. We could have used the drips. Yeah. We could have. I mean, it was just this week. There was, there was something missing. We were missing the Mutt man. Thank you. I want I want to go on the record. I think this week was just kind of if I was going to give it a grade, I would give it maybe a C minus. Okay, but you bring in Mutt this week, it takes him to a whole nother level. Not yeah. having Mutt in this week, and I'll tell you this, I, I, and I'm not lying about this. If they if if Kirk and Jeffrey Lowe go to a UConn game, and Mutt's not there with them, sitting right in the middle, we will riot in the streets. Okay, you've got to give Mutt an opportunity to get there. If he doesn't get to get there, we riot. That's yeah, all. I'll, that, I hope I'll he burn goes, the place to the ground. Hopefully, he goes Danny Hurley on everybody. I'll <laughs> burn it to the fucking ground. Okay, Mutt needs that. Give that to Mutt. He has only so much going on in his life. And a, a shout out, by the way, to Mutt and Mutt's mowers. I know you didn't see this. I saw this. But Gus is gaming on Wednesday nights after the drips. It's a powerful night on the network. Like Thursday nights with Seinfeld and Cheers and all that back in the heyday. Obviously not Friends because I've never watched an episode of Friends. Wednesday nights on the network, that's the new night with when Gus is gaming. So Gus is out there gaming. He's got Mutt's mowers out there. So think about this, Sheldon. The beauty of Mutt is he, even in his scenarios where he's in a any fantasy land where he actually has a job and he's a landscaper, even in those scenarios, it's not even him who's working. It's Mutt. So even in a video game scenario, he's still jobless. Isn't that beautiful? Like, that's still Gus right there. Like, so he's got Mutt's mowers that are going on there. So Mutt mowing. 
that's also something that happened this week that you missed, but I caught that in. I loved it. You've already checked out on this conversation. I don't care, okay? But I'm a fan of Mutt's mowers. That's all I'm saying. Don't. Uh, I, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> I have nothing to add. I have nothing. Okay. To add. All right. Well, not do doing think, it. Okay. Do you think? Uh, do you ever think we'll get the doggo back with us? The guy in the dog mask. Do you ever think he's? Um. Yeah. We talking about that guy. That guy who used to do the show with us. Remember that guy? Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever happened to him? I. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. But it, yeah, because I, I, I remember doing the show last week, and it yeah. was just two of us, and it wasn't yeah. even. Yeah, I. Hmm. The guy in the dog mask. Well, I I'm enjoying the pick and roll that we have here. I you know I love that. I do I do miss the doggo. Maybe we'll get him back next week. If what we, was that? What was that guy's name again? It was uh... What was his name? Um. Giggy? Giggy. 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 That's it. Giggy That's Ro- it. Roberson. Something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah maybe. Giggy. Well, listen, if we ever get Giggy back here, maybe we do it after the live show. Maybe we do a little reaction show to it. That's what I'm pushing for. We FaceTime you in, and we do a little live reaction to the live show. I never did ask. I don't think this is, I don't think he's going to do this, but this isn't going to be like a pay-per-view thing again, is it? Did he say no to that? Am I missing something? Um, You know, that's a good question. That never came up. I don't think. Because like the Sacco show? I think if it sold out, I think he said in the past, if he's had shows that have sold out, then he would have it be pay-per-view. Well, I can't justify fucking flying to Portland on Easter weekend. I'm sorry. No. No, 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 no. I don't blame you for that. But maybe. If we can, we'll FaceTime you in. I'd like to get you there too. So maybe we can do a maybe we can get back together with Giggy and do a show. Who knows? Yeah. RP that guy. Yeah, I'm missing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. I think that's it. I think that's the rundown. I think we've done think, it all. I think um, we covered it. I think we did. Um, listen, and if by the way, last thing, but Tom Shattuck, welcome to the big leagues, kiddo. Um, if you ever want any advice on how to host a show with a drunk, loudmouth, rambling co-host like Giggy, I'll give you some notes, don't worry. But until then, you might want to put that broad to bed. That's all I'll say. But that was a rundown. Thank you, Sheldon.